Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Figma Shorts, a mini interaction series in Figma where we learn the basics of Figma. And the topic of today's video is basics of components. So imagine a scenario that you're working for the app design for your company and the marketing team comes in and says, hey, we have changed the brand colors. Can you update all the screens accordingly? And now you're drenching in sweat because deep down the rabbit hole, you're 500 screens deep. And now you have to go on all those 500 screens and change the instances of those colors, right? Not if you have used components already. If you have used components, this would have been just a single click, right? So components saves a lot of time and makes you almost like 10x faster with your design workflow. So if you are someone who is already using components in their daily design workflow, awesome, kudos to you. But if you are someone who do not understand components or you're not using components to its fullest extent, then this video, with this video, I hope that changes. We're gonna learn about the basics of components and how to use them. So let's get started, yeah. So let's first quickly understand the basic definition of components. So components are elements that you can reuse across your design, as I've told earlier. They help you create and maintain a consistent design system across your projects. Uh, you can create components from any layers and objects you have designed. Pretty much anything that you design in Figma, you can convert it into a component. And there could be a whole range of things that you can do with components like buttons, layouts, icons, and more. And there are two critical aspects of components. One is called the main component or the parent component, which defines the property of that component. And then there are instances, which are basically copy of that main component. And these are the instances that you actually reuse on your uh, design. And instances are directly linked to the main component. So if you do any changes to the main component, the instances or the copies automatically receive those updates as well. So this is the basic definition of it. Uh, don't get too worried about what does it mean and if you're not understanding it. Uh, we're gonna learn this, we're gonna understand this from a live example. So let's quickly hop onto the example and understand it better. So let's have a look at our first example and it's a simple button, it's a simple share button. It contains, this is a frame that contains a share icon as well as a share text. Now to convert this frame into a component, it's really simple. You can either go to the top section and click on this diamond icon and it'll create a component or on your keyboard, you can hit option command K. So if I hit option command K, the frame is instantly converted into a component and a component is represented by this diamond. So this fill diamond represents the main component. Okay. Now uh, we have a component ready. Let's quickly duplicate it. So if I duplicate it like this and this copy of the main component is called instance. So an instance is represented by this hollow diamond here on the left layers panel. So main component is represented by the solid diamond, whereas the instance or the copy is represented by this hollow diamond. Great. Now uh, let's quickly define the two basic properties of component and instances. So the first property is called inheritance. What does inheritance means is basically uh, if you change any aspect or if you update any aspect of the main component, it will get immediately reflected into the instance or the copies. So let me quickly show you that. So for example, this is our main component. And if I select this button and change the fill color from this green to let's say this pink, you would see that the instance immediately receives that update. So the change of color is immediately reflected back into the instance. Now you can change any aspect of the main component. So for example, let's say you don't want eight DP border radius. You can change it to let's say four or maybe zero. So if I let's change it to zero, you see now my main component is also at zero radius. Also the instance is inheriting all the property that we have changed for the main component. So it's also now at zero radius, right? So that's how the inheritance work, basically inheriting all the properties from the main component. Now let's look at the second property of components, which is called overrides. So for example, I have these two buttons and now I come here on the instance or the sh copy and I change the share text to something like, let's say rate, right? Sorry. 
And if you see, when I change the text here, it does not reflect back to the main component. I can even come here and change the icon. So for example, I change it to the star icon. And if you see, this is not reflecting back into the main components. So this is called an override. What an override means is that you can change or you can have a variation in the copies or in the instance, but it will not reflect back to the main component. So inheritance means that anything that you do on the main component reflects back into the instance, whereas overrides means that any change that you do on the instance will not get reflected back to the main component. So now we learned about overrides. Let's say there's some scenario where you want to restore or reset all the overrides that you have done and you want to convert that back into the original state, the instance back into the original state. So what you can do is you can select that instance that contains an override. For example, this instance, it contains an override of icon as well as the text. And you can come to the top section here with this icon and click on reset all overrides. So when you click on this, it will restore it back to its original state. So the instant will revert back to its original state and look exactly the same way the main components look. So pretty nifty actually, right? Uh, second thing is once you're creating the component, when you created like ton of components, so for example, let me just quickly create a bunch more, right? So let's say we have all these instances and they are all linking back to the main component. Now imagine in a practical scenario where you have like 500 screens and you have like 1000 instances of the same uh, component, it will be very tricky for you to find the main component. Of course you can find the main component visually by looking at the solid button, but finding it on a really big file will be really difficult, right? So what you can do is you can come here on any of the instance and you can right click on it and you can click on go to main component. So when you click on that, Figma will automatically select the main component from where it's inheriting the property, right? So you can go to the main component directly from here. It's like time travel. And you can again return back to the instance where you came from by this button. So this is a pretty nice feature. Now let's say somehow when you were like quickly working on the files and by mistake you delete the main component altogether. Woo, scary. How do you get it back? Uh, of course you can do command Z, but let's say you even forget to do that. And now you're realizing that, hey, I don't know where the main component is, right? Because you deleted already. So what you can do is you can select any one of the instance and hit restore component on the right. When you do that, the main component is back again. So Figma has made it really, really simple. Even if cases where you do mistakes or you do changes or you want to revert back to changes, you can really quickly do that. You don't have to rely on command Z or control Z all the time. So pretty nifty, right? Um, so this was one of the very simple examples of using buttons and explaining the inheritance and override property. Let me just quickly explain you with one more example how components uh, work so that you understand a little bit more better and then you move on to the next sections. Okay, now let's have a look at another example. So I have a really typical card these cards are really typical on all the apps these days. Uh, imagine that you have a social media app about travel and you have this sort of a card and the card contains an image, the location and the country and that's it. Okay. So let's convert that into component first. So we'll hit option command K on our keyboard and this will convert into a component and it will be represented by the diamonds. Okay. Now uh, let's duplicate it really quickly and we'll duplicate it a bunch of times. Okay, let's do it two times, okay? Now let's say uh, what you want is, you want that the second card should be about Austria, the third card should be about Norway, and you want a different image and different text. So we can use the property of overrides here, right? So let's quickly just do that. So that's it. So if you see right now, we have used the property of overrides to update the image as well as text. And since the skeleton remains the same, overrides becomes a really, really nice property to use it across the system. So not just buttons, you can also convert complex components like these cards into different sort of uh, uh, component and instances properties, and you can use it across your design systems. So the skeleton will become the consistent part of a design only the content inside it will change. So really nice uh, example of overrides and inheritances, okay? 
One of the main aspects of component design in a design system is grouping them or organizing them so that you can find them really easily or anyone in your team can find it really easily. So uh, for example, what I've done is I have added different types of components. For example, button is one type where you have two buttons, you have icons and you have like this component, which is card. Okay. So now these are different type of components that I've created. And by the way, these all are main components as represented by the solid diamonds here. Okay. Now to organize them based on their type, you can do this grouping by simply changing their name in the layers panel. And what it'll do is Figma will automatically group them under a folder. Let me first quickly show you how it looks like when you don't rename them. So these are just normal names that I have added. And if you go to your assets tab, so you can find your components, all the components that you have created under the assets tab. And if I go to the assets tab, you see page three contains all of these uh, components that I've built, which you're seeing here. All of them are available in the assets tab. But if you see, they are just ungrouped. They're just randomly added here because we have not added any structure to it. To now to add any structure to it, what we have to do is we have to just come on the layers panel and rename the name. So for example, the share and the rate, these two are button types. So what I can do is I'll select first share. I'll come here and I'll add button in front of it, button slash share. So what will happen is anything before the slash Figma will create a folder out of it and share will then sit into it. Okay. So this nomenclature uh, lets Figma know that, Hey, I want to create a folder. So anything before the slash will be created as a folder and you can do as many slashes as you want, depending on how uh, intricate you want the structure to be. So let's say first I have renamed it button slash share the rate one. I also want it to be under the button category. So I'll come here and I'll again add button to it. Make sure the structures that you want to add the folders that you want to have the same name so that they un go under the same folder. So button slash share button slash rate. So these are under two buttons. Similarly for these icons, what I can do is I want them to be added into the icon category. So I'll add icon in front of their name slash. So now they will go and sit under icons folder. Similarly for star, I'll come here and I'll add icon in front of it. So now both of these two will sit under the icons folder and the card is here and I'll just rename it to card slash travel. So this is like a travel card. So I'll just rename it to card slash travel. Now what you have done is we have added these uh, folders. Now let's see how the assets panel look now. If I go to the assets panel, you see page three now contains three different sort of groups. And if I expand it, you will see buttons have these two buttons. Uh, icons have cards have this one card because this has one card and icons have these two icons. So if you see Figma has now nicely created a folder structure sort of thing based on just the naming that you did. So this is how you organize your um, components by doing a simple nomenclature. Always, always is the best practice to do to name your components accordingly and it'll help your team find it really quickly. So that's it. That's about the nomenclature. Now let's quickly move on to the prototyping, which is the last segment of this how prototyping works for components. Um, so guys, to demonstrate prototyping in components, I have a few things already ready with me. I have an artboard, iPhone 11 artboard. We have a share icon here and we have a bottom sheet. Okay. Now what we want is when we click on the share icon, we should open this bottom sheet inside this um, artboard. Okay. So I have converted the share icon into a component first and I'll hop onto my prototyping tab and I'll just link this share icon to the bottom sheet. Then I'll go to on tap, navigate to and bottom sheets perfectly fine, but I want to open an overlay. So if you want to know how to build bottom sheets and how to build that bottom sheet interaction, you can quickly check out my last Figma shorts video. So we'll do open overlay, bottom center. The animation is bottom to top, close while clicking outside add a background behind overlay and do move in. Okay. And we want this to move in from bottom to top Ease out 300 milliseconds. So perfect. Now let's quickly see how it looks like. Yeah. So this is our artboard and we have the share icon. And if I click on the share icon, I see a bottom sheet coming in. Okay. And I click outside goes away. 
so perfect so now if you see this is not anything particular or peculiar right there is nothing really peculiar about it so the peculiar thing happens now so this is our main component and what i'll do is i'll just move it here and i'll duplicate it bunch of times to create instances out of it i created three more instances so now we have four uh, share icons right and we, anyway we can do overrides on them as well um now what i'll do is i'll if i show you the prototyping tab if you see all four of them are now linking directly to the bottom sheet and we did not do this we just linked the first main component but all the instances are also inheriting the same property of prototyping that we did for the main component so if i go in my prototyping tab and if i click on the first icon it's opening the bottom sheet if i click on the second icon it's again opening the bottom sheet third same fourth same so this becomes a really really handy option when you're building let's say a component that does the same action on every other page so for example the share button on every other page of your app is going to open let's say a share module right so it's very simple and becomes a really easy hands free option to just quickly link the main component with the parent interaction and all of the child all of the instances all of the copies will inherit the same interaction property So guys, this is the final example, and in this we have the cards that we built earlier, all these travel cards, and we have this bottom sheet, and I have just put all these cards inside the uh, artboard, the iPhone 11 artboard, and this is how it looks like, right? It's a scrollable uh, card list, and what I want to do is lie now the previous example that I've done where when we linked one component and the instances also inherited the property of that. we can also do the same thing here and it's an extension of that same example so let's say this is my main uh, card which you see here represented by the solid diamond i want to add let's say an icon to it let's say share icon okay so what i can do is i can come here i can go to the icons and basically i can add a share icon uh, i can even change the colors as an override okay so let's do that i'll add this color okay So now if you see as soon as I added this into the main component all the uh instances inherited that same icon as well right so I just added it here and they inherited that same property as well now what we want is let's say I want when I click on this icon it should open the bottom sheet so now let's quickly link this in the prototyping tab now what will happen is in this case since we just linked the main component with this main icon to the share icon to the bottom sheet uh, ideally all the cards now should inherit the same action so let's quickly see how it looks like in the prototyping tab so this is the first main card and if i click on it i see a bottom sheet now if i go to the second card i click on it i see a bottom sheet again and third card bottom sheet again and fourth card bottom sheet again So if you see, it's really handy. Uh, you just link the main component, and it's now inheriting all the other instances are now inheriting the same property, same property of prototyping. So this makes things really, really faster and makes your workflow really fast. And guys, that's it for today's video. Uh, this is the basics of components. I hope you liked it. In the next video, we're going to talk about auto layouts, and further than that, we'll also discuss like down the line in the tutorial sessions. We'll also discuss about uh interactive variants so pretty nice and once you have mastered all this we'll move on to building design systems so stay tuned uh, subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in my next video bye bye